So this is a kind of uh, uh, the second part of the hidden Markov model. So uh, first, I will quickly review the uh, previous lecture and then moving to the forward backward algorithm and then finishing this lecture with Baumwell's algorithm. So uh, the, this is the uh, HMM course. So the focus is acoustic modeling, right? And then, as I mentioned in this lecture, uh, we just omit the uh, the uh, the the, uh, the condition uh, the, of the phoneme sequence. But always remember that we have a phoneme sequence. So just kind of omit it for the simplicity. And we actually introduced the four uh, the, the recipes to uh, formulate the uh, EM algorithm. One is the uh, introduction of the latent variable. Second one, complete data likelihood. Third one, auxiliary function. And the fourth one, parameter estimation. And we already explained it, but I quickly go through as a review of this part. So first, uh, introduction of the latent variable. In our cases, let's use the alignment uh, variable. Uh, the which uh, the is having having an information of uh, the each time uh, the what kind of other uh, state we are other uh, the staying. Given the introduction of the uh, latent variable, we started to make uh, uh, the complete data likelihood, where we actually uh, the try to kind of our. Uh, starting from this uh, the joint distribution, or which we call it a uh, uh, complete data likelihood in the maximum likelihood EM algorithm context, and then factorizing all the kind of probability, and finally setting the probability distribution like a Gaussian and the marginal distribution and so on. And uh, by the way, I explained this one, but I actually didn't explain how to get this kind of bar likelihood function, which can be obtained by marginalizing all over the other, other sequence. And this is uh, the, the very important, uh, and uh, we will explain it in the uh, the, this uh, uh, lecture, actually. And again, you know, this one has a summation over the sequence, so we cannot directly solve it. So we need some kind of a way to solve it. And the third one, it is actually the probably the uh, the, the uh, one of the most uh, the equation heavy <laughs> uh, the, the part, uh, and uh, I kind of are providing the, a lot of equations, and finally uh, the changing this uh, the, the, the the summation over the sequence to the kind of each of the uh, component uh, each of the term uh, that is uh, the the uh, pi a. Uh, the, the, and the other uh, uh, parameter of the Gaussian. So we see almost kind of uh, uh, the uh, uh, solving this kind of uh, uh, the Q uh, the, uh, function, auxiliary function. However, we have a kind of mysterious uh, variable here, gamma yj, uh, xi minus one ij, and gamma tj. It's actually replacing, just a kind of a replacing this kind of a probabilistic distribution with these kind of a variables. But anyway, these kind of uh, the, the distributions are actually mysterious variable. And I still didn't explain how to uh, solve it. And the pitch is actually solved by using the forward backward algorithm today. And then given this kind of auxiliary function, uh, the last, uh, last kind of uh, other operation is to get the kind of solution of the each other estimated parameter basically uh, based on this other kind of uh, other objective function and then get the derivative derivative to other uh, find the kind of uh, optimum uh, the pi a and mu r that is the other uh, parameter uh, we introduced for the uh, the, the during the the, the uh, concrete form of the other uh, uh, the likelihood function so these are review uh, of the previous uh, the, uh, the estimation. And then uh, let's focus on the, the what we didn't solve. So first part is, as I mentioned, uh, this posterior value, st equal j given o, and st minus 1 equal i, and st equal j are the given o. 
these two posterior distributions are not uh, are the, the, are the solved. And this other lecture, we will focus on this. And actually, as a byproduct, and uh, through the kind of forward backward algorithm, we also have a, 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 a efficient uh, a, a way to solve uh, this and uh, uh, the likelihood computation. So that will also be covered uh, in this lecture. Okay, so uh, the, now we know the target, right? Again, the, the, we uh, the, uh, prepared this kind of auxiliary function, but we don't know how to kind of providing this one. That is a target uh, of today's lecture. Okay, let's uh, the, go to the other uh, forward algorithm. So before moving to the uh, this kind of algorithm, let's try to understand what this st equal j given O mean. So this is actually the other uh, uh, the I using the uh, the three other uh, state uh, HMM, and if we have our uh, the, the five frames and so on, and then actually uh, this uh, the probability can be uh, regarded that. Uh, we are here, for example, that if t equals three and st equals uh, the second, uh, the, the HMM state of U, and then actually this means that we are here. Okay. And then probability is that kind of our other, all possible other passes that other goes to here. So, this uh, that can be uh, the, the many actually passes, like for example, from here to here, it goes to these passes, right? And from here to here, it also goes to these pass passes in the red. So uh, the many of the passes we have to consider, and if t becomes very large, it again becomes the, uh, the exponential. Uh, but also the, the note that some of the passes are not available, right? For example, to go to uh, the, to always, you know, go through this point, uh, do we, do you think this kind of uh, path is allowed? Actually not, right? By the way, if there is very tricky HMM, like you know, going back to the original pitch man, we usually don't use it for the uh, HMM modeling. And then it might happen. But generally, uh, the left to right are uh, the, the HMM uh, that we do not have uh, the exist uh, the two other uh, 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 we do not have this pass uh, the, that you know satisfy that t equal three and uh, st equal uh, the u uh, the second HMM state. So again, this is a kind of a probability of the uh, the second uh, the t equal some point and then. Uh, the, the state is uh, the, the, uh, going to uh, the, the, this uh, probability, the satisfying this, all possible state, but satisfying this kind of point. Okay, and then the, the question, uh, the short quiz, uh, the, please uh, the open to. By the way, this probability is also called the occupation probability because this means that this occupy here. Uh, so uh, the many people actually calling it different the occupation probability or responsibility uh, and so on. Okay, uh, now I hope I, you understand that the uh, meaning of this uh, the occupation probability. And then I will move to the another kind of type of the variable that other uh, uh, that the target in this kind of lecture. So this one is uh, the showing that actually the previous cases the uh, it was a point, right? But now actually this one showing that actually arc. And let's say the example that t equal four, and then uh, the uh, the phoneme u is at a, at a switching from the, at the second to third state. So in this case, actually, the, the, uh, this becomes uh, the, this value, good ZC and the HMM state two and HMM state three. So this is a kind of way to 
uh, the, the specify uh, this uh, the probability. And this one is corresponding to this red line. And then this one is corresponding to the all possible kind of passes that always other goes to this one. So this means that from here to here, maybe it's better to use the pen. Uh, from here to here, this is a kind of a possible the 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 the, uh, the uh, trajectory, and similar to the uh, the last cases. There are some trajectory that is not a uh, the the uh, the uh, allowed uh, the, to satisfy this kind of uh, to pass this uh, uh, this kind of arcs. In these cases, uh, this is not included uh, in this probability uh, the, the considerations. So uh, the the uh, the very similar to the last time, right? But the again that it is whether. Uh, the transition uh, or whether it is a point uh, and so on. So let's discuss about how to obtain uh, these values. And then to obtain this value, it's actually not straightforward. Uh, we will introduce the further two values. Uh, first one is so-called forward probability, which is defined by this kind of uh, the probability. And the backward probability, uh, that is also the defined by uh, this kind of a probability. And then first explain why this kind of two probability is used to form uh, this other uh, computation or this computation. So the first other uh, that goal is to uh, the explain uh, two kind of uh, the rewrite this equation based on this one and this one. And then how to get this word and uh, the, the backward probability is uh, the explain later. First target is the again, you know, uh, they make a relationship from these two other uh, equations and the forward and the uh, backward probability. And probably this part is the most complicated part uh, in terms of the equation and uh, among my old lectures. So first, uh, the, the, let's uh, focus on this one, transition one that we, you know, we have uh, discussed. And we still try to use the all kind of uh, probabilistic rules. And the first uh, that we uh, that decompose uh, two distribution with a product rule. By the way, we kind of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the omit the denominator because it is not related to the, uh, the our target. And this uh, means a proportion, not kind of equal, but the proportional. This one is proportional to this one. Uh, but the, uh, this kind of denominator is not related, P or given theta, is not related to our target uh, so that we eliminate it. So I think this kind of a proportional uh, the, uh, notation is also uh, the appeared in the, uh, the last week uh, homework. So uh, the, please make sure to understand this, this one. This one is not equal, but we just kind of are removing the denominator or well, sometimes a numerator, but mostly denominator. Okay, so uh, that it is still complicated, and then we can actually uh, the uh, decompose the the uh, entire sequence to the uh, the subsequence, which is uh, we kind of used in the last week, right? We just kind of rewriting the uh, entire other uh, other uh, sequence to the subsequences, uh, so that it is kind of easy to uh, the factorize the equation later. And then I actually don't want to show you this kind of equation, <laughs> but it is becomes this kind of three component, uh, which is comes from the other uh, product rule. And uh, this one is actually mostly kind of just factorizing this first term to this one, this one, and the uh, uh, data one, it comes from here. So we have uh, actually three other uh, equation now. And uh, uh, note that these three equations are just a product group, uh, nothing, uh, the, the, any kind of uh, the, uh, the approximation, the conditional independence assumption was done uh, at this stage. However, uh, the, uh, 
And I think people here could、uh, follow it. You know, it's like a you know, chain rule, right? First O1 T, and then this one, you know, this one goes to the condition. And the second, this one becomes the,、uh, the um, argument. And then this guy becomes the condition. And the last one, this one,、uh, there is argument, the rest of all the condition. So it's not very difficult, but it's very complicated. But uh, uh, the, I think this one is not、uh, easy to solve. So then that we actually uh, will uh, do the、uh, condition independence assumption. But uh, probably uh, the, the, this is difficult to make it tractable with the conventional、uh, Gaussian mixture model or conventional neural network. So that we will do the conditional independence assumption. But I think. Uh, that if we're using the advanced neural network, like a transformer and so on, we could actually uh, the, the, uh, the present each of the function. So maybe one very cool research direction would be to use the,、uh, the, this, each component to be represented by the,、uh, the neural network function.、Uh, that can be a very good、uh, research topic, like combining the,、uh, the, the uh, generative. Uh, the neural network uh, the, into the,、uh, the classical uh, the speech recognition formulation. But、uh, yes, the, this is、uh, the possible to represent each of the、uh, distribution by,、uh, the, by the,、uh, the neural network. But the, in general,、uh, if I try to kind of、uh, solve it with the Gaussian mixture model or a simple neural network that cannot consider the context and so on, it is very difficult. So let's use a conditional independence assumption for each of the、uh, the, the factor and then simplify it. And this one is actually uh, the for, uh, the not easy,、uh, but the,、uh, I will show you the technique to do that. Let's first focus on this kind of equation、uh, and so on. It、uh, sounds like a very complicated observation conditioned by the one, two, Three, four other four variables, right? And we are not sure where we kind of set the conditional independence assumption. And then in these cases, we, let's try to use the graph. The graph representation is always easy for us to understand the kind of dependency. So I just kind of are, are the, are the, write the HMM basic kind of graph as a structure. Which are the only kind of、uh, the depend on the observation and the previous state. These are kind of、uh, the simple HMM graph. And then let's、uh, pick up this first factor. Again, we have a lot of kind of conditions, so it sounds very、really、complicated, right? But uh, uh, let's kind of、uh, write uh, the, each of the kind of uh, uh, the, the variables、uh, in this kind of、uh, the figure. For example, O1 to T is an observation, and I kind of using the yellow circle、uh, in this uh, the, the, uh, figure. And then condition, I use a kind of a red circle.、Uh, the ST equal I, ST plus one equal J, and OT plus one, OT plus two to T, kind of are setting it as a condition. And then、uh, the, try to think. Uh, whether uh, these conditions、uh, change s the result of this kind of yellow, whether it is dependent or not. So, first, this future observation, do you think it would depend on this、uh, the previous feature in this graph? No, right? It's actually, yeah. Other models, it's maybe, but the HMM, there's no such kind of a passes to kind of affect this kind of previous one. So we can actually safely、uh, the, the ignore this one as an HMM,、uh, the, the conditional independence assumption. Same for ST plus one, whether it's kind of a, the result is change or not, that doesn't kind of affect this kind of probability, right? But this one, definitely, yes. This one will affect this one. So, the,、uh, given this kind of a,、uh, the, the graph, 
we can actually removing the uh, uh, the, uh, the some of the uh, irrelevant uh, conditions again based on the HMM assumption. And then we can simplify that this one is only depending on ST equal I. So basically we do the kind of same uh, the, uh, the um, procedure one by one for each of the uh, probability. Let's now move to this one, OT plus one conditioned on T plus two to T subsequence and ST equal I, ST plus one equal J. Again, it is not easy for us to understand which one is, you know, are they the uh, conditionally independent and so on, right? And then I would recommend you guys to write the figure. And then I would recommend you guys to also add, 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 clarify which one is a condition and which one is a variable. Again, add a OT plus two to OT, they are not, uh, the, uh, the depending on the uh, previous feature, right? Uh, HMM in general, just kind of depending on the, uh, the, the, uh, the observation from the state. And the second, uh, ST plus one, this one depends on OT plus one, right? Because it's, if this is J, uh, if changes to the, like for example, J equal to two, it becomes three and so on. And then this will affect this kind of a, a variable. So this one is actually uh, the, the depend. So the question is, would this depend on the uh, OT plus one? Yeah, some of them are, are the right answer. Yes, it actually did not, do not depend uh, because already ST1 plus one, this one has some variable. So regardless of this, the, the previous state is changed. Eh? This one is uh, the already as a condition to fix. So uh, the, this, by the way, if this is not the red circle, if we, this one is, for example, without circle, and then uh, this depends. But since this one is condition already kind of observed signal, so it will not be changed, even uh, this one is changed. So actually, uh, this one only depending on the uh, ST plus one, very simple. And the uh, last one, it is uh, the getting more simple. So probably I can skip uh, the, some, uh, the uh, many of the value, but uh, anyway, from uh, the OT plus two to OT, it actually could depend on ST plus one only. Uh, by the way, again, <laughs> the in this case, ST plus one depends on ST plus two because this part is not uh, observable. So it can be changed. And then uh, in this case, we have to consider the, uh, the condition of ST plus one. So by doing this kind of uh, the careful uh, HMM assumption applies to the, each of the function, finally, these are the complicated, uh, the three equations, and we have a last four equations. But uh, these, the three equations are actually significantly uh, the simplified. And actually these, each of the, uh, the variable uh, corresponding to, for example, first part, uh, the corresponding to the, uh, by uh, the doing some kind of operation, but then the first part is uh, the corresponding to the, uh, the forward probability that I, I mentioned before. And the second factor, this is actually uh, the HMM, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the Gaussian, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the function, that we uh, the introduced before. Once we know the kind of state, we just have a kind of a, a, the, the Gaussian distribution. And the third factor is uh, represented by the uh, backward probability uh, that defined by the previous equation. And the, uh, the fourth factor 
is actually state transition, which is also, again, we actually introduced as a one of the concrete form uh, of this kind of problem and so on. So uh, the, that's, uh, that's this kind of uh, the state of transition probability, which uh, that we introduced, we first kind of providing the interpretation of this one. This is actually uh, the computed by the forward probabilities, backward probability, and the Gaussian, uh, and the uh, the and the state transition uh, probability. So by doing that, uh, the the problem uh, becomes how to solve this uh, the, the uh, forward and the backward uh, probability. So now we have a relationship uh, with this kind of other uh, uh, the posterior distribution and them. And the we can do the same things for the uh, the posterior distribution of the occupation probability. And the here. I kind of are making the many part to be blank. This means that it will be a four mark. <laughs> uh, but uh, note that this is uh, the easier than the previous one. So this one is very complicated, right? And uh, the, compared with this one, this derivation is relatively easier. So, uh, the, but it's it's gonna be still kind of a similar way to solve the each of the equation. So I just want to make this one uh, the other uh, the homework. So, but anyway, that it's everyone can follow this equation. I think this is the most <laughs> complicated equation, I would say. And probably many of the textbook actually uh, didn't have this kind of a careful explanations. Uh, so my lecture is uh, quite, uh, the the uh, the things I couldn't understand uh, from the many of the textbook. I spent actually quite when I was in the your ages. <laughs> I spent a lot of time to understand this one, and then the uh, the I kind of was providing the each solution one by one. So um, I hope you guys would understand uh, uh, this kind of uh, way of the uh, equations. Yeah, again, some of the textbook just you know are uh, these kind of uh, the derivations are uh, written. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, uh, the uh, the I will try to kind of give you uh, the each of the operation one by one. Okay, so now uh, the summary uh, of the two posterior probability is written as the. Uh, uh, the forward probability alpha, uh, the backward probability beta, uh, in the uh, the anxiety IJ cases, the, the transition cases. And remember, this is not the arc, just the arc cases. And then uh, the in the kind of uh, occupation cases, uh, the again remember it is a point uh, of the kind of uh, uh, the uh, the probability. Uh, this is uh, the represented. Uh, uh, by the uh, alpha uh, forward uh, the, uh, probability and the backward uh, probability and uh, some normalization factor, both are having a normalization factor. And then uh, the, the, uh, this state transition and the Gaussian, we can actually compute some value. So you now it's time to uh, move to uh, the compute alpha and the beta. Okay, and the first I will give you some kind of a meaning of the forward probability. Uh, so the forward probability of this uh, the, the case is that the uh, that we kind of generating the observation from one to t at st equal to j. So let's say for example the, the HMM state is a first state, and the observation is one to two, and then uh, the, this. Uh, the corresponding to the uh, the probability of generating uh, this point uh, and the other uh, other uh, considering the all kind of uh, the uh, 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 considering all other kind of possibility and this one is actually not easy to compute 
Uh, however, we can actually compute it incrementally. So first, let's uh, the incrementally means that, that we can first define the initialization and then see that uh, from, for example, initialization point whether we can have some uh, the, uh, the computable or not. And if we also are uh, solving the relationship between the t plus t from t to t plus one, and then we can incrementally solve everything, right? So let's go to uh, this uh, approach. And it's actually uh, the exactly the, it becomes the algorithm uh, of how to solve this kind of values. So plus alpha one j, so t equal one cases, special cases. Uh, this is a kind of our, uh, the uh, the, uh, the more like a straightforward. We can just kind of uh, the institute uh, the substituting the uh, the uh, value one here, and then it actually turns out to be a very simple uh, equations of the uh, the uh, the pi is the initial state uh, the in the uh, time t uh, the fit, uh, time one which we introduced, and the uh, the uh, other other part is just a Gaussian. So we can compute it, right? Okay. So there's nothing, no alpha, beta, or no gamma, or guzi, uh, or other values. So we can compute this one for all kinds of a state. And then let's try to kind of give a, a relationship from t plus uh, t to t plus one. I think this is also very complicated, and I think it's this is not included in the homework or even in the exam. So I will <laughs> quickly skip. So this is also another kind of little bit complicated equation, but I believe it is not included in the homework. So I will just <laughs> skip the <laughs> explanation. Uh, but uh, if you guys you know uh, the have time, uh, please check each of the kind of process, some rule, sequence decomposition, uh, product rule, distributive productivity, uh, product rule. But uh, uh, the, please check this kind of a result. Important part is that alpha t j is represented by alpha t minus one i, okay, times state transition a i j, and the other uh, Gaussian distribution OT. So this is actually uh, the incremental equation from here to here, right? So if we have our, you know, alpha one and the solving, uh, the computing this one for the up to a J state, you know, one, two, three state, we computed this one, right? And then since this one is the incremental, so we actually know all the kind of value in the uh, alpha equal one, and then by using the state transition and the uh, the, the Gaussian distribution in that other uh, timestamp two, we can compute the alpha two j, and we can do the kind of uh, the same things again and again, and then uh, it goes to the kind of a final t, it's uh, the, is a kind of end of the uh, the, the the computation. So actually, uh, the, by doing that. Uh, we can actually compute uh, all the other uh, forward uh, the probability in the kind of uh, the, the, the required equation. So I will kind of make it as a kind of a, uh, algorithm style. So first, we of course have an observation and we know that the Gaussian distribution and uh, some uh, the, the state transition probability uh, weight uh, the AI and the initial state uh, pi. So given this, first, you know, uh, the t equal one to compute uh, the uh, this one, it is corresponding to the t equal one here, right? And just we kind of compute it from all state, one to j. This is corresponding to one to three. And then now we have uh, this kind of a computation. I think I also skip here this one. Yeah. Uh, we basically compute the alpha one, two, three, uh, the three state cases. 
So this is a kind of a, the case that the, the, uh, that we finish for the end of all uh, equal line three. And then from the next uh, the state, uh, uh, sorry, next kind of time, we basically are the computing the, for example, uh, alpha two one by considering the uh, the the state transition uh, times the uh, the uh, Gaussian distribution to compute this one, right? And then we just kind of go through this computation until large t. And uh, I just want to mention that. This one doesn't have a summation over the sequence, right? It's basically kind of a, a traverse all through the kind of a graph at the trellis point. So the, the computation cost is actually maximum uh, the j square t. Actually, j, j, not the jt, but the j square, because every time for each j, we're computing the, this summation. So it's going to become the j square. So in the other, for example, HMM cases, it's gonna be three state, or if we consider the all character as a state, it's gonna become 30 and so on. It's 30 times 30, a little bit larger, but still kind of uh, tractable. But the important part is linear for the time. So this one is, you know, uh, the, the, again, uh, that we don't have to care about the summation over the sequence, and then we can compute that this other uh, forward uh, probability and so on. So this is actually uh, the, the forward uh, probability, which I believe you guys will uh, the implement uh, in the homework assignment too. But actually it is bit hard, right? It's forward or for the forward, yes. So. It's very similar algorithm for the beta B algorithm can also be kind of replacement of this kind of algorithm. And the feature is slightly easier. So for the, uh, the default for uh, the weekly uh, not coding assignment, uh, we will ask you guys to uh, work on the, uh, the uh, beta B algorithm, which is very similar to this one. But the, uh, the four other algorithm is also uh, the, the, we prepare as a bonus point uh, for you. And the, uh, the same for the beta B algorithm and so on. This, there is a kind of a lot of uh, the, the node, which will be in the coding assignment and so on, uh, the, as a node in the coding assignment and so on. But I will kind of mention it because these are quite frequent questions. First, uh, this computation is actually a lot of multiplication happens. And the multiplication of the other uh, Gaussian distribution happens quite uh, the, 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 uh, the, the many times. So I'm very sure that uh, you guys cannot solve it if we just kind of purely are uh, using these equations. We actually have to take the log to compute this one. But uh, uh, the, to take the log, some of the operation is not easy to solve. And then there's the log sum exponential operation technique, which is kind of a computing, uh, the, even that we have a kind of summation inside and we take the log, we can actually solving this kind of a method by avoiding the overflow or underflow and so on, which again will be uh, the, the described in the our coding uh, the, the assignment document. Uh, so for now, I just want to mention that the, this log sum exponential log domain computation is necessary. Otherwise, probably you guys will always get zero or <laughs> quite a large number, and then you actually cannot get kind of a uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, right value. So this is a one node. And another, another the, uh, the node is that I kind of mentioned that, you know, we would kind of check the, okay, this one may be fine. We will consider to compute the, uh, the, the, uh, the each 
uh, the, the uh, uh, each uh, the point uh, that's corresponding to the uh, the sweeping to the t equal to two and j equal one to j and so on. However, remember that the sum of our operation uh, would potentially have a state transition zero. So, uh, like for example, uh, the normal HMM, this doesn't happen, right? But uh, uh, usually, uh, what we will do is just kind of writing this equation as it is, and then making ARJ to be sparse. Like for example, uh, the, the, from here to here, this uh, transition may not happen. One, two, three, A one, two, three becomes zero and so on. And then we can actually uh, the, uh, compute it efficiently. Or you, if you guys want to use the if uh, the else and so on, that is also fine. But usually people uh, that are using the sparse matrix representation for this one, and then just computing it, which is e easier. But then if we take the log of the zero, of course it is not uh, defined, right? This is also another kind of frequent question. No, the, 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 my the equation is the exactly correct, but it goes to log zero, <laughs> how to deal with that. <laughs> um, just set the minus large number. <laughs> or the Python actually uh, the prepare some number, right? Minus in for something like that. Yeah, anything is fine, but uh, just a minus large number and then uh, the approximate the log zero and then the program is going well. So there are a lot of other ways to avoid it, but I guess this is the most simple way. So the, the compute it in the log domain, in this case, using a log sum exponential operation, and also in this case, log zero often happens, and then we just replace it the minus infinity. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the, now, uh, the, now uh, the, the, we, uh, the, uh, have the uh, the all the forward uh, variable, and then actually uh, there is a kind of a very nice side effect uh, of the forward uh, the algorithm, uh, which is that we can actually compute the uh, the likelihood. So likelihood uh, the value here is uh, de uh, de defined by the uh, the p s uh, the o joint probability. And then you know uh, the summation over the all of uh, the, the sequences, right? Which uh, the last uh, the, the, the lecture we mentioned that we, we cannot compute it, so we should avoid it. But uh, actually, uh, the forward computation can also providing the this likelihood value. So this one is actually just a trick of uh, making the case of if we the reaching to the uh, final t. And then uh, the just kind of uh, the reverting the original definition of the forward variable. This one is like an observation st equals j. So again, we comp can compute this value based on the forward variable. And then by using, for example, some rule here, it actually is marginalized and it goes to the likelihood consider all possible stage sequence, right? But uh, this is, there's no approximation. Uh, the, uh, the, <laughs> we say conditional independent assumption in the HMM is an uh, the approximation. But other than that, there's no assumption. Let's say we use the HMM and the computer likelihood. There's no approximation to we actually compute the likelihood by using the whole other, other computation. So this is after the kind of, we get all the kind of our, uh, the forward computation, we just summing up the, the forward value variable in the, uh, for each state. And then uh, this becomes the, uh, the likelihood. And this one is also forward, uh, forward computation. It's not the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the at the most uh, linear for the time, right? So we actually can compute the likelihood in the linear, uh, the, the, the uh, linearly in terms of the time uh, and so on. So this is a kind of a forward 
uh, the other algorithm. Uh, um, any questions? Um, I would recommend you guys again, you know, this coding assignment to, <laughs> to uh, they, they understand fully about uh, this one. I kind of explained about each of the operation and the required equations, formulations, and so on. But uh, uh, they, they, after you implement something, I think you guys uh, further understand this kind of forward uh, the algorithm. Okay, so backward algorithm, I basically skip the uh, backward uh, the algorithm, uh, the explanation. Um, okay, this one is missing blank, blank. So this means that probably this is uh, <laughs> the homework. Uh, but anyway, this would be a kind of similar to the, what we are doing for the uh, for the algorithm. So if you carefully check the for the algorithm computation, I hope you guys can actually derive this kind of backward, algo recursive backward algorithm equations. So you could see that the result is very cool. Uh, I think this one, yeah. Beta t is, comes from the t plus one. So it is actually the, the, from the future to the, uh, the, the uh, current. So this are the opposite direction to the uh, forward. So people uh, also call it the, the uh, backward algorithm. By, by the way, in the backward algorithm, uh, the initialization t is always starting from one. And the backward algorithm is actually quite similar to the uh, forward algorithm in terms of the uh, the the basic form of the algorithm. So I kind of skip the explanation, but the computational cost is actually same as the forward uh, uh, forward uh, algorithm and so on. So now that's it. Uh, the, thank you so much for carefully <laughs> uh, the following this kind of uh, uh, the equations and so on. So these are the, uh, all of the kind of uh, required uh, the operations. So now we have our forward algorithm and the backward algorithm. So we can actually compute this uh, the, the posterior probability, uh, the transition, uh, the posterior probability. And we can also compute the uh, the uh, the occupation uh, probability. So these two variables are computed uh, by the forward backward algorithm. So this is a kind of a, uh, the entire uh, the the, estim uh, the explanation uh, of the forward backward uh, algorithm. But I will just have a few uh, remark. So uh, given this forward backward algorithm. We can actually uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the build the parameter estimation algorithm. So remember that the EM algorithm is actually iterative, uh, iteratively performing the parameter estimation. So we have some initialization and this parameter estimation, and then uh, we can actually compute the, uh, the uh, EM uh, algorithm and so on. By the way, uh, the M step, this, uh, as you see that, you know, uh, the after the forward backward algorithm, we now know all the kind of this value, xi, uh, the gamma, and so on. So by doing that, we can actually compute the, uh, the, the all the kind of uh, parameter and so on. And the, uh, but the, uh, we can also rewrite this equation, by the way, like this. So there's nothing uh, so much change there, but the basically taking the summation uh, in the beginning. So this kind of uh, the, uh, the form of taking the summation uh, the, in the kind of uh, the, the, in the, uh, the, uh, the before the uh, getting the these solutions are very useful when we are performing it parallelization. 
uh, which probably will not be so uh, the, the important for many people, but this actually nature is very important uh, when we performing the parallelization uh, because each of the kind of computing node just kind of returning to this kind of our, uh, the, the statistics and the master node actually aggregating all of these statistics and then performing this kind of a computation, uh, uh, this computation and so on. So this uh, the, the uh, statistics accumulation property is actually quite important when we kind of parallelize the, uh, the, the algorithm. Okay, so given that, uh, this is a kind of a, uh, the last part of how to uh, the estimate the HMM uh, the parameter training part. First, we, of course, we need to have a data, right? And then second, we actually need to have some initialization. Okay, so the EM algorithm initialization is important. And then what we will do is first perform the forward algorithm to compute alpha Tj for all T and J. It's not so difficult, right? We just kind of uh, 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 making it incrementally for each time and each other state. And uh, as a kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the side effect of the uh, forward algorithm, after we finish the forward algorithm, we can actually also compute the likelihood and the likelihood. And then second part, we do the kind of backward uh, the algorithm to compute a beta t for all t and j. We just kind of uh, do the kind of uh, the opposite direction of the time and the performing the backward probability. And now we have a all set of the alpha t and the beta t, alpha tj and the beta tj. And from this, we can actually compute the uh, this uh, gamma work z, which is the probability of the occupation or probability of the transition, right? From uh, the, this one and this one, from this one and the parameters, we also can compute this one. Now uh, we know that all kind of a time and all kind of state or all kind of a transition, these are the values. And then uh, given these kind of values, we are uh, the computer sufficient statistics, and then we update the uh, uh, HM parameters. In this case, is pi A mu R is updated. These are one iteration. After that, using it as a kind of a new uh, parameter, and then doing the forward, backward, uh, computer gamma T, Z T, and the uh, 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 sufficient statistics at uh, the computation and do the kind of uh, HMM parameter update again. And then uh, the, where we kind of use the likelihood. Likelihood is used to monitor whether this kind of uh, uh, the value uh, is uh, the, the, uh, the correctly uh, the, uh, the estimated or not. If this likelihood value uh, that goes down, which means that your algorithm is wrong. And uh, we usually using this likelihood as a, as, uh, the convergence conditions. For example, if the likelihood uh, value uh, becomes converged gradually, which we usually observe, and then if the, the likelihood doesn't kind of uh, improve so much, with some kind of threshold, we can actually cut the uh the uh, uh these other uh, uh, iterations and then we can actually uh, update the result but uh, as i mentioned in the last uh the, the in the, the last week uh, so this is actually em algorithm is okay to uh the run many times uh it would not uh degrade the performance in terms of the uh, likelihood criteria which is not very bad uh, the, so you guys can, you know, uh, the, do uh, the, uh, this kind of iteration many times, but again, to save the kind of uh, the computation, people usually check the likelihood, and then once it is combined, we just cut it. 
Okay, so that's the kind of uh, end of the uh, this uh, HMM part. Now the uh, all computations are tractable. So there are, there are the summation over the sequence everywhere, right? But it was uh, that is gone uh, for all the kind of computation. And then we can actually uh, make it. And then this is iterative computation similar to the back propagation. And the initialization is very important. Uh, but with that, we can actually add a, uh, they get a kind of a very good uh, other convergence. Oh, I also have to mention this. There is no hyperparameter like a learning rate or batch size and so on, right? We don't have to uh, use it. So this is actually a nice part of the, uh, the, the EM algorithm, uh, but the initialization is very sensitive. So uh, in the, uh, our uh, the coding assignment, uh, uh, this is also a, another second frequent question, uh, the how to initialize it. It's clearly mentioned in the, uh, our kind of a write-up, but uh, how to initialize it. We will basically uh, the, the performing a uniform assignment for the HMM cases. This is not very bad. <laughs> The initialization and the Gaussian mixture cases we use the k-means, and this is a part of the, uh, the assignment. Okay, so that's it uh, the, in this lecture. And uh, any questions? <coughs> okay, uh, thank you so much. <laughs>